सो गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ऑल इन लेक्चर नंबर नाइन ऑफ मॉड्यूल टू दैट इज हाउ टू लिव इन रिलेशनशिप्स सो बेसिकली फ्रॉम द लास्ट लेक्चर वी आर ट्राइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड वेरियस फार्मुलेशंस गिवन इन आर ट्रेडिशन दैट हेल्प अस टू लिव इन रिलेशनशिप सो इन दिस सीक्वेंस इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी स्टडीड एट फोल्ड पाथ गिवन बाई बुद्धा इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी another formulation given in tradition that is yam niyam so let's start with this formulation and we will see how this formulation is helpful to us in living with relationship so this is another formulation which we are going to study yam and niyam so yam means ensuring harmony in relationships and niyam relates to ensuring harmony within myself and these are articulated in patanjali yog sutra so in this lecture we are going to study yam and niyam in depth once we study this a significant observation you can notice in yourself that if you study if you understand these principles it will impact on your behavior in relationship in complementarity so basically after understanding of these niyams you will be able to ensure harmony in relationships as well as you will be able to ensure harmony within yourself so when we ensure these at the level of thought then it helps not only at the level of behavior but it also help at the level of understanding at the level of feeling so we will elaborate these principles in this session so let's try to understand niyam and yam so if we talk about niyams it means ensuring harmony within myself we are going to study these five points purity contentment self discipline self study contemplation so these are basically related to ensuring harmony within myself and in the context of living in harmonious relationship these principle will help us non violence truthfulness non stealing chastity non possessiveness so with the understanding of niyam will be we will be able to ensure harmony within myself within ourselves and with understanding of these niyams yams we will be able to ensure harmony in relationship okay so all these yam and niyam we are going to study in this lecture in this session so non violence truthfulness non stealing chastity non possessiveness these all five have been termed as yam but along with these we will discuss five more principles as purity as patience fortitude compassion non hypocrisy major diet this we are going to study in this session so basically we are going to study this five and plus five ten principles under the head of yam then we will discuss niyams yani ki cleanliness of mind contentment self discipline study of self contemplation of the ishwar god so if we study these two in details we will be able to live in harmony within myself and harmony in relationship so let's start and try to understand one by one so what does non violence means so non violence means not hurting anyone so the practice of non violence means not 
to cause trouble harm to any living being so we can see this non violence at three level at the level of physical physical level at the level of body mental level and behavioral level so non violence means not hurting others at the level of body not hurting other at the level of speech and also not hurting other at the level of mind so among these the level of speech is more subtle than the physical level and the mental level is more subtle than the verbal level to be more subtle means to ensure non violence the minimum scale to live in non violence practice that we should not give any kind of pain to the other so if we place it positively we can say the message goes to live affectionately with all not hurting means i have feeling of affection for all so once i have feeling of affection with all then there is no question to hurt the other people at the minimum scale it is named as non violence if we talk about the highest possibility so the highest possibility is named as love affection with all when we are not violent at the level of speech and body then non violent behavior is also ensured so to ensure such non violent behavior it is necessary to be mentally good at the root so continuity of affectionate behavior is an outcome of non violence in another word we can say ensuring harmony at all levels at the level of individual family society nature existence is non violence or we can say understanding coexistence interconnectedness interrelatedness and live according to it is basically non violence so it it means non violence when i understand non violence i live in harmony within myself with the feeling of affection with the feeling of love compassion and also i ensure complementarity outside with human being rest of nature so with this non violence we can live harmony with all let's move another component another principle that is truthfulness so truthfulness means to be able to express the reality or event as it is without making your own coloring without making any assumption without giving any color to it from one's own side so truthfulness means what i have seen as a reality i am telling it i am describing it i am not making i am not mixing my assumption while telling the reality so what the reality is i am telling it as it is this is truthfulness so it is possible that different people express their understanding of reality in various ways in various language in various body postures in various with various expressions but what is significant in all of this the significant is their intention to understand the truth their intention telling the truth this is important part so the important point is that we are trying to express things as they are even though there may be differences in our perspective so this is truthfulness okay so in a true sense we can live this five yams only to the extent we have understood seen the reality there can be con continuity of the conduct of yam on this basis 
let's see another principle non stealing so non stealing is the third principle after non violence and truthfulness so non stealing means not to steal in another language we can say not claiming ownership to the things which belongs to others or using only those things that one has produced or earned in another way so we can say in two ways about non stealing number one one way is saying that not claiming ownership to things belong to others and number two is use only those things that has been produced by you that has been earned by you this is non stealing so using those things that one has produced you have produced and it is not not uh, non stealing okay so let's move another principle i hope you are able to understand it then chastity right use of senses so next principle has been identified as chastity meaning right use of senses so right use of senses and the body on the basis of right understanding to use senses in a right manner at the base right understanding is required in you so understanding the basic laws principles associated with sensation and on this basis ensuring self regulation and right use of sensation is possible okay so understanding the basic laws principles associated with sensation and based on this ensuring self regulation and right use of sensation is considered right sound smell taste touch with right understanding now i am able to place these senses now i am able to utilize these senses for harmony i am not indulging in these senses so chastity means right use of senses which can only be ensured with holistic perspective because with holistic perspective with right understanding i am able to see the placement of senses now i know what is the role of senses which i have got in this nature so right utilization of those senses in a systematic and organized way is known as chastity okay so you can investigate in yourself you can observe yourself whether you are able to see right utilization of senses sound touch sight taste smell so you can ask yourself this question you can observe yourself okay so let's move to the next principle non possession so this is the fifth principle named as non possession so the tendency of possessiveness begins when we start assuming the right on another person or things of others as our own so if i don't have right understanding in myself so i assume that everything whether it belongs to me or other is mine this is start tendency of possessiveness so when we do not accumulate unnecessary thing the things are available for use in society and everyone so non possessiveness is about not accumulating things that are unessential so that is not my need that is the things that are not my need the things that i have not produced i am not accumulating it i am i am not possessed about it this is non possessiveness this is non possession so we can develop the mindset of non possession only when we have developed that tendency for right utilization and sharing that 
which remains after right utilization. So with non-possession, I also share the things which I am not able to use. I share those things with others. So the outcome of adhering to these five principles that is non-violence, truthfulness, non-stealing, chastity, non-possession purifies us at the level of mind, speech and body. So truthfulness brings the purification of speech and makes our speech organized. The practice of non-stealing and non-possessiveness enables us to make the right utilization of things, share things, acquire wealth by way of production to ensure or ensure necessary service in the society through one's labor, thus living rightfully. The attitude of possession makes us believe to have the right to another person and to have a sense of possession on that person, which often leads to tendency of oppression. Therefore, being centered on non-stealing and non-possession, the mindset of oppression in behavior is resolved. So, if we follow these five principles, it purifies us. It purifies our mind, it purifies our words, it purifies our actions, our behavior. Okay. So these five yams we have studied. So these five principles are related to each other. If we follow any one of these seriously, sincerely, the need to follow the rest becomes automatically a natural process. So these are interrelated. So for example, the principle of non-violence. It is recognized as the most important of these five. If the principle of non-violence violence is established within us, the other principles follow naturally, spontaneously. So these five are also called anurat woes of limited nature. So, Anu means small, limited. Vrat means right choice. It means I am committed for making right choice. So, making a choice for doing the right thing, the commitment and eagerness to do it. So, when we follow these woes in certain places, certain times with some people, it is called Anu Vrat. And what does Mahavrat, what does mean Mahavrat? Maha means big. Vrat means right choice. So when we follow, follow these woes at all places, at all time, with all pe people, it is called Mahavrat. So when we are ready to follow it in every country, with every person, in every age, it is recognized as Mahavrat. Or we can say it is a universal oath, universal pledge. It is a commitment from my side that I will live following these woes. So it is Mahavrat. So this is the ultimate place to reach. But anyhow, if it is not possible, we can live with these principles, at least with some people in some country, in some time. So we can start with Anubrat. And ultimately, we can reach up to Mahavrat. So, starting from your place, starting from people around you, an expansion of this Vrat up to every place with every human being is required. So, you can take pause for two minutes and ask yourself, are these principles are important for you? Do you commit to follow these principles starting from some place, then expansion up to the whole world? So you can investigate in yourself.
now i hope you would be able to understand non violence truthfulness non stealing chastity non possessiveness and you would also be understand meaning of anuvrat meaning of mahavrat so i hope you have understood all these principles okay so let's move towards next now we are going to talk about forgiveness fortitude compassion sincerity and balanced diet so if we talk about forgiveness what is forgiveness forgiveness means it it is it has two parts the first one is to live resolutely in harmony with preservation with preservation which is known as patience the second part is to live with no bitterness no ill feeling this is forgiveness so forgiveness means ensuring that there is a patience within and no bitterness ill feeling towards the other so it means i am unaffected from the behavior of the other so if i am living unaffectedly from the behavior of the environment behavior of the other it ensures forgiveness okay so let's move towards next principle fortitude so fortitude is the second name of yam which means right and appropriate behavior even in adverse state or situation so right appropriate behavior even in odd circumstances and it can only be possible with the right understanding in myself so if once i have right understanding i live according to natural laws i live in coexistential manner at any circumstances so what's it uh, what its outcome expression bravery is an expression of it so bravery means i am living according to natural principles i am living according to my natural acceptance i am living with coexistence i am living with interrelatedness and i am sustaining it at any condition this is bravery so it is an expression of it okay let's move to another principle compassion so compassion is the third aspect of yam so maximum help to the other in relationship so it means now i can help to the other with acceptance of his or her state with acceptance of his or her competence so non violence is the minimum help in a relationship that i am not disturbing anyone at the level of mind body and speech and maximum help to the other in a relationship is living with compassion that's why it is written non violence is the minimum help it means i am at least not disturbing others but maximum help is compassion i am ready to help him at the level of speech at the level of body at the level of self i am ready to help him at any condition this is maximum help compassion okay so let's move towards another principle sincerity non hypocrisy so the fourth yam is non hypocrisy which means living with sincerity and simplicity and free from pride and ego so once we have right understanding once we have understood the previous principles we will be free from ego and pride and we will be living with simplicity will we will be living with commitment sincerity 
to ensure harmony around us around me so this is so this is an outcome of this sincerity what would be outcome i will be free from pride and ego i will be living with sincerity and simplicity so all these principles we are trying to understand from the perspective of outcome so let's move towards another principle that it measured a diet so measured diet means right intake appropriate diet so a measured diet is required for the appropriate health of the body for appropriate behavior in relationships so for the health of the body for appropriate behavior in relationships appropriate for being active without being lethargic lazy for all this we required measured diet so by following this principle our interaction with others becomes harmonious along with this the work of purification at the level of body speech and mind starts through this practice practice of these principles then achievement so the fifth yam by following these principles our interaction with others becomes harmonious once we understand all these principles what will be the outcome what will be the achievement following these principles understanding these principles our interaction with others becomes harmonious and and it also ensures purification at the level of body mind speech and i am able to ensure harmony with rest of the nature too okay so so far we have talked about these 10 principles under yams we talked about non violence we talked about truthfulness not stealing chastity non possessiveness forgiveness fortitude compassion sincerity major diet so we have studied these 10 principles under the yam now we will try to understand five niyams it means purity contentment self discipline study of self contemplation of the ishwar so now we will talk about niyam which is mainly associated with self improvement self purification so to be organized at the level of mind and body five more principles have been identified which are called niyam so let's try to understand these niyams so first is purity so the first principle is purity the purity at the level of body and also at the level of self at the level of mind so purity at the level of body requires cleanliness purity at the level of mind is being free from mental ailments ensuring the right mental qualities so impurity at the level of body can cause unhealth can cause health problems and impurity at the level of mind can cause psychological problems that's why purity it is required at the level of body and at the level of self at the level of mind so try to observe impurity at the level of body causes health problem causes unhappiness and impurity at the level of mind causes unhappiness psychological problems etc so you can stop here you can pause this video you can observe yourself what are you doing to purify your body what efforts are you making to purify your mind 
सो प्यूरिफिकेशन ऑफ संस्कार आर रिक्वायर्ड एंड प्यूरिफिकेशन ऑफ संस्कार कैन बी डन विद द हेल्प ऑफ सेल्फ एक्सप्लोरेशन सेल्फ इन्वेस्टिगेशन सो इफ आई एक्सप्लोर माई सेल्फ आई इन्वेस्टिगेट माई सेल्फ आई फाइंड आउट माई नेचुरल एक्सेप्टेंस एंड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दिस नेचुरल एक्सेप्टेंस वी कैन प्योरीफाई वी कैन इवेल्युएट आर संस्कार एंड फॉर सेल्फ डेवलपमेंट दिस प्योरिफिकेशन ऑफ माइंड इज रिक्वायर्ड सो यू कैन आस्क योर सेल्फ वॉट आर यू डूइंग टू प्योरीफाई योर माइंड सो लेट्स मूव टूवर्ड्स अदर प्रिंसिपल कंटेनमेंट तो सेकेंड नियम हैज बीन आइडेंटिफाइड एज कंटेनमेंट सो कंटेनमेंट इज अबाउट बींग एबल टू करेक्टली रिकग्नाइज वंस नीड फॉर द फिजिकल फैसिलिटी एंड लिव इन हारमोनी विद दैट मच सो द माइंड सेट ऑफ लिविंग इन हारमोनी विथ फिजिकल फैसिलिटी अवेलेबल टू अस इज कंटेनमेंट ऑन द कंट्री कॉन्ट्रेरी वी कैन से दैट फिजिकल फैसिलिटी बिलोंगिंग टू द अदर does not become a reason for our greed thus not talking us towards jealousy so if we live with contentment the problem like corruption theft cheating can be evaded so with this contentment many social problems we can get rid of so mindset of living in harmony with the physical facility available to us is basically a contentment so you can ask yourself are you living with contentment so next principle is self discipline so self discipline means able to practice and live harmony on one's own right the environment does not influence if we live with self discipline we live the way we want to live in harmony with human being ensuring prosperity with rest of nature now i do not live in arbitrary way i live according to coexistence i live according to natural laws this is self discipline now my living is not getting affected from outer environment now my decisions are coming from my natural acceptance this is self discipline now i am living the way the existence is this is self discipline so in the absence of self discipline i get influenced from others i involve in various unethical practices and what is the way to come out of these situations to understand yourself to understand coexistence so as i understand coexistence i become self disciplined more and more okay so let's move towards another contemplation of the ishwar ishwar a symbol of the most expanded human properties and human conduct it is visualized as ishwar as god so it is not important that ishwar exist or not what is significant is, is whether we are able to contemplate on that feeling and thought or not this is important can we contemplate a human qualities can we contemplate human conduct it is important so our feeling and thought are set right through continuous contemplation it is appropriate to use any dedication endowed with human properties it can be helpful in two ways establishing our feelings and thoughts within 
it slowly transforms our feeling and thoughts in tune with that form representing those qualities so contemplation is required contemplation is an important part so we can contemplate constantly with that feeling and thought if we cannot do thinking in this manner we will be affected from others so the main important issue is to organize one's feeling and thoughts through contemplation of those properties so it help us developing our feeling and thought in harmonious manner and we get transformed slowly at the level of feeling and thoughts so let's sum up the things what we have studied till now so we have these five laws have to do in harmony within and by following these laws our feeling and thought is slowly set right and we are able to work more harmoniously and ultimately we are able to follow these yams ensuring harmony in relationship and niyam ensuring harmony within consistently so when we are making effort for it we are able to achieve up to a certain level so by this way our mind our behavior our work get purified it means it get aligned with coexistence so let's some of the things so we have studied these 10 principles under yam non violence truthfulness non stealing chastity non possessiveness then we studied five more patience fortitude compassion sincerity major diet and then we studied five niyams so we studied purity contentment self discipline study of self and contemplation of the ishwar so if we understand all these yams and niyams we get purified our mind get purified our actions get purified and we are able to live in harmony in myself and with others human being as well as rest of nature so i hope you have understood all these principles you can make a list of these principles and you can evaluate yourself on the basis of these principles you can start with anuvrat and goes up to mahavrat so it's all from my side for this lecture in next lecture we will study next formulation related to living in relationship thank you very much let's meet in next lecture thank you